Hi, hi everybody. Uh, we, uh, we are in the second day of the Induscon 2021. Uh, we are about to start uh, the section electrical machines and drives number three. Uh, uh, and um, my name is Olavo Lupi from uh, Federal University of ABC. I'm the co-chair of the session. And uh, I'll try to, to check if how, how is the connection of the chair of the session, Rafael, uh, Rafael Moura. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Can you hear me? Uh, so, so I think your, your connection is not so good. Uh, well, so uh, um, as long as the, the, the connection problem of Dr. Rafael persists, I'll try to, to, to take this, conduce this section, okay? So, the, so we, we will see a, a video uh, that we gather all short videos of the, 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 the papers presented in this section. So we'll present all of them in a row, and then we'll we'll bring all the the authors here. So um, we um, and, and then we'll start the the, um, the questions and answers uh, session. Um, so um, dur during during the session, uh, you can post your. Uh, your comments, your questions at the YouTube channel, chat, uh, and we we can share this these questions here. Okay, so I was to so now let's uh, see the 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 video. This is a short presentation of the paper entitled Design and Analysis of Permanent Magnet Synchronous Generator and PWM Boost Converter for Isolated Ocean Wave Energy Conversion System. The work has three main general goals, which are specification and design of the electrical generator, modeling and control of the generation system, and to perform several simulations for different wave energy conditions. First, uh, the per uh, permanent magnet synchronous generator machine was designed uh, to work as generation of this system. Uh, some uh, design requirements was, were considered, which are environmental conditions, rated power, rated speed, and direct coupling between generator and the turbine. Next, we show the electrical equivalent circuit of the generation system. We have the circuit parameters of the designed generator and the power converter. The power converter is a three-phase boost PWM rectifier with uh, power factor correction. Uh, this converter has uh, three main advantages. Control, uh, we can control the converted power in a single stage. We can work with unitary power factor and have uh, generator currents with reduced uh, total harmonic distortion. After we worked on the modeling of the electrical system and design of the controllers, we developed two models, one analytical model which was implemented in Simulink and one circuit model which was implemented in PSIM. We also de designed the controllers uh, to have unitary power factor and to follow power references to optimize power conversion. Here we show some results and discussions uh, about uh, direct current and quadrature uh, current. Uh, first, uh, direct current uh, for both circuit and analytical models are very similar and we can see some levels which are according to the levels of power references which was set for each case. Uh, we can also see that uh, quadrature current is al almost zero which is uh, expected since uh, this leads to uh, unitary power factor. Uh, here, if we look at phase current and phase voltage, we can see that they decrease as power references decrease and also that their frequency also decreases. And if we look at both uh, phase voltage and phase current on the same graph, we can see that power factor is unitary and that is uh, that are uh, very low levels of uh, harmonic uh, distortion. 
And here our main conclusion. Uh, the designed electrical power conversion system allows controlling converted power in a single stage for a wide range of wave energy conditions, working with unitary power factor and low current total harmonic distortion. Thank you very much for your attention. everyone, my name is Julie Calero. I am going to present to you the dynamic control validation of the power generation system of an offshore platform through real-time digital simulation. In this world, we have three objectives. First one is to develop faithful representation of an actual platform generation system in the real-time digital simulator, RTDS. The next one is to validate the performance of the automatic voltage regulator, ABR, and the governor using file data and file test record of the power generation system of an offshore platform through RTDS. And the last one is to simulate several transient phenomena to analyze the dynamic response of the ABR and the governor. An offshore platform is a stationary unit of oil or natural gas production by drilling wells in the sea. Typical, it consists of an isolated electrical network composed by four turbo generator of 25 megawatts, 13.8 kilovolts, and 60 hertz, connected in parallel in the main bus, and the tiebreaker remains closed. Under normal operation condition, this system operates with three generators, and the fourth one remains on standby. The LOA is composed by static load like navigation system and power transformers and dynamic load like induction motors. Also, the entire platform system has been modeled on the RTDS. The focus of this work is on the analysis of the generation system, especially in the speed and voltage control system. In the RTDS uh, library is available the model of the synchronous machine and the inertial block of the turbine while the governor and excitation blocks were additional implementation. In the methodology, first we are going to validate the mathematical function of the governor and the excitation blocks, considering only the operation of one synchronous generator with a resistive inductive load set. A comparison was made between the results of the real-time simulation and the file test result. After the validation process of the synchronous generator dynamic control, three cases of transient phenomena were simulated in order to analyze the performance of the generation system integrated into the platform electrical system. The test is carried out considering the platform in normal operation, that is with three turbo generator operating in parallel and fitting the loads of the platform. A complete offshore platform was modeled into the RTDS. Thank you.
everyone, my name is Jonathan Munoz and today I'm going to briefly present the, the main results about our work in, uh, about voltage imbalance separation impacts on IE on an IE4 uh, class line star permanent manning motor. This this motor is uh, basically an induction motor with a squirrel cage and uh, is viewed as the substitute of the induction of the conventional induction induction motors. So with this motor, it is expected to have a higher efficiency, lower consumption, lower temperatures, uh, due to the characteristics that permanent magnet uh, give to this uh, particular induction motor. Uh, with the classification of the Inter International Electrotechnical Commission, we have uh, four efficiency classes defined at this point, and the IE4 class uh, uses the line start permanent manual motor in which with which we can have a higher efficiency and a lower consumption which helps a lot in, in, in the substitution analysis for in the substitution for all uh, a non-efficiency uh, induction model like the IE0 non-regulated motor uh, which represented about 80 percent of the total globe of the global consumption in 2000 and right now uh, with the IE1 which is the standard motor it represents about 60 percent of global uh, electricity consumption so the substitution of a uh, new higher induction motor can give a lot of uh, economical and ecological benefits for for the world and every country in particular uh, here we have a configuration about the line star permanent manual motor. Uh, we analyze the permanent manual motor with inside permanent manual motor in this configuration, and we use a, a programmable source uh, which uh, create voltage unbalanced condition with under and over voltage on the line star permanent manual motor. All the parameters we are measurement with we measure it with a power quality analyzer and the load with was simulated using a, a, a cold break. So the main conclusion uh, is that the line star permanent manual motor represented uh, uh, the voltage imbalance uh, resulted in even variation in the phase currents, uh, which increased losses in consequential temperature. Uh, after that, we we know that the voltage imbalance condition resulted in higher total harmonic distortion of currents, uh, and the power factor in this motor is also invers in inversely proportional to the a voltage magnitude that is a higher magnitude of voltage with respect to the nominal value with the nominal value the power factor decreases and at lower voltage the total power factor increases uh, the knowledge uh, and the reference thank you very much is Ismael and in this video I'm going to present variable structure model reference adaptive control for square cage induction generator based wind energy conversion systems. In this paper uh, the contribution involves the application of the simple first order VSM rack with linear zone modification to a square cage induction generator based wind energy conversion systems with the simplicity of the stator flux Slip control scheme seeking to outline the parameter uncertainty issue, maintaining satisfactory dynamic response indexes and simplicity of control scheme. In order to evaluate the proposed control, entire system modeling was carried out in MATLAB Simulink. A parametric uncertainty was applied to the resistance of the stator, and a comparison to API and the traditional MRAC is carried out. The adaptive control presents robustness against parameter uncertainties, external disturbance rejection. The MRAC presents slow transient response, but the VS MRAC presents fast transient response. The wind turbine aerodynamic was modeled 
for the mechanical model and also the chef dynamics was considered. For the electrical model, three windings in the stator and three windings in the rotor. These are the equations for the score occasion inductor generator, where we can see the stator and rotor fluxes, the stator and rotor voltages, and the electromagnetic torque. Applying the arc tra transform, we obtain these equations and through a correct referential, we obtain the SFSC, where we can, we can see two PI controls for the fluxes and one PI control for the rotor speed. The VSM rack presents a reference model and a plant, and the goal is to make the error between the output of the plant and the output of the reference model zero. And we also use the reference and the output of the plant in order to obtain this control. These are the equations that we use in our system. And these are the square occasion that we generate the parameters, the wind turbine parameters, the controllers parameters that we use. And these are the results. The first block are the results without the uncertainty. And the second block is the case with the uncertainty. The PI controller could not handle the uncertainty and got unstable. And the results suggests that in order to design a controller for a plant with uncertainty, the VSMRR control technique is a good choice. In comparison to the traditional PI control, uh, it has good response in the transit, regardless the case of uncertainty. In comparison to the MRAC, it has a faster, faster response in the transit, but due to the switching of the control signal, uh, it results in a response with more ripple. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marco Rocha, and today I'm presenting the work Detection and Phase Identification of Inter-Turn Short Circuit Faults in Three-Phase Induction Motors Using MEMS Accelerometer and Hilbert Transform. The three-phase induction motors are known for their robustness and are applied to drive several types of industrial equipment. In industries, they are the major consumer of electrical energy. Therefore, the relevance of this work relies on the applicability of teams. However, these machines are also subjected to electrical and mechanical failures. These faults, including inter-turn short circuit faults, can lead from small energy losses to total failure. In both cases, there are financial and production losses involved. Therefore, the industry is constantly seeking feasible diagnosis solutions. The methodology used to identify the affected phase can be summarized by this diagram. After the short circuits were applied to a team, cross correlation and Hilbert transform were used to process the vibration signals acquired by MEMS sensors. Then, it was possible to carry out the detection and the phase identification of the fault. The results showed that using cross correlation allowed a threshold value that detects the fault occurrence. Additionally, the Hilbert transform allowed phase identification by clustering the samples of each affected phase. The proposed cross correlation technique for inter-turn short circuit fault detection 
proved satisfactory since its accuracy was 100%. The application of Hilbert transform envelope energy resulted in a mean silhouette clustering performance of 84.98%. Thank you everyone for watching this presentation and available for questions. My name is Bendy Katukula Shombe, and I'll be presenting to you uh, the voltage harmonic impact on line stop permanent magnet motors. Right? Um, for this, we have to look at the situation that is quite common, which is the efficiency of the motors according to the international um, efficiency standards. Right? And basically, we have four when we look at induction motors, right? Uh, they are composed from IE1 up to IE4. Now, if you look at them in that sense, you have the standard motor, high efficiency motor, the premium motor, as well as the super premium motor. In our interest, we'll be looking at the line start permanent magnet motor, which has the efficiency of almost 96% at uh, it's steady state, so this is much more interesting for us, right? Now, looking at the line start permanent magnet as a whole, it's basically just a composition of the induction motor as well as the interior permanent magnet motor, and with a bit of differences whereby um, there are areas where they have flux barriers, right? And then this is basically to reduce the amount of flux that goes through those areas. There are other configurations, right, that you are able to observe here, right? And basically, for this experiment, we implemented a methodology whereby we had a three-phase harmonic source, a power quality analyzer. Um, this source feeds the harmonics into the power quality analyzer, right? and they go to the induction motor, as you're able to observe here, right? And they go into there. We are able to observe the result with the power quality analyzer, as well as have a, simula a computation simulation and validate the result, right? Now, we, in this case, we used a line stop permanent magnet, which is of 750 watts, right? Um, we are able to visualize as well some of the voltage unbalanced magnets as shown below. Now, interestingly enough, we have a few results that are quite interesting, whereby as we increase the amount of harmonic distortion, right? We have a gradual increase in the in the average current which in the result will obviously affect our temperature in this case, which follows almost the same principle whereby we have greater temperatures at higher harmonic distortion. Now, contrary to that, we have the power factor whereby the more we increase the harmonic distortion or the fifth or the variation, we have the contrary happening whereby uh, the power factor reduces, right? 
And the total harmonic distortion index shows that uh, as we increase the harmonic distortion, it so does, and it gradually increases as well. Okay, with that, I would say welcome to the presentation and thank you. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, we have just uh, watched the, the videos. Um, my name is Olavo Lupi, um, the, the co-chair of the session. Um, the chair of the session, Dr. Rafael, was having some problems with connections. Uh, let's see if, if uh, his connection is, is better now. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Well, so so. <laughs> I think <laughs> I changed computers and it's not good enough yet. Oh, well, okay. So you can see the here and you can just uh, carry on. Yeah, I I can. Um, your 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 voices chop it to me. Seems chop it to me. But but okay, I, I, I can I can conduce the, the session. Um, well, um, we are we are receiving um, we are receiving uh, the the questions from the audience. Um, so for you that are uh, is watching from YouTube, you can post your your questions, your comments about the the words presented. So we, we can show here. And um, I will ask uh, to, to, to put out everybody on the, on the, on the screen. I, I, I think this, the, this method uh, is better. So um, we have um, many specialists um, from, uh, uh, for the same um, for the same um, uh, you know for for electric motor motors and 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 drives um, I have a, I have a question for the the, the first work uh, who, who was the author of the the first work uh, it's me Igor Igor hi Igor yes. um, I was curious ab about the the ocean wave energy conversion system. Uh, uh, your 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 work was focused on the design and as analysis um, of the permanent magnet synchronous generator. But can can you explain to us how how, how does it work the this uh, ocean wave energy conversion system? I can try. Uh, my English is not so good, but I can. Okay, try I, I can. Uh, if you if you have some difficulties with idiom, I can try to to translate something to you. Okay. Uh, in the beginning of the, my my study, we 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 start a, a partnership with the a university in Portugal. Uh, they have many works about the ocean waves and um, mechanical engineer, but they know they didn't have the electrical no. So uh, in URGS, we start with the study of the permanent magnet uh, synchronous machine. Uh, we have the idea that uh, project and uh, construct the machine, but with the COVID it wasn't possible. So we have uh, to make a simulate work. We introduced the, um, uh, the part of the control, uh, power electronic, 
that wasn't the idea of the the work but we don't don't know we don't know uh, very we don't have the the knowledge about the ocean wave uh, uh the university of portugal uh sent to us some papers with uh average power uh that we can use so but we just use the 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 data we didn't uh, get that from from the ocean wow uh okay thank you um i i, I think um professor rafael who, who is having some problems with, with connections um uh is trying to make some uh question can you share on on youtube for igor um are there any commercial system like yours if so how does your system compare in terms of performance and price uh we didn't see any any system like ours uh was uh i didn't find any studies that uh, uh have all these parts uh, the uh the, the 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 team of portugal they have um some stations meteorological uh in the ocean Me meteorological uh, stations yes and we have to to make these stations uh self sustainable this is our objective our goal but don't, doesn't have any commercial system like this is the yeah. first is the first study about about this uh, in principle of course okay uh good wow um someone well let's see if we have some comments from from the audience uh not so you you can post your questions um uh, also you if the the authors if you have questions uh to any other author uh we we don't need to to follow us in a specific order but um i just asked uh igor because he was the first um who asked um well so we have a question for the for the audience could you please share it to us? Uh, for paper uh, B5, uh, why did the authors apply the Hilbert transform for signal processing? Oh, can you can you add, answer to us? Uh, your your mic is muted. Acho que vou ter que responder em português. Tudo bem? Ok, you, you can... É, a transformada de Hilbert, no caso, ela foi aplicada né, para extrair a envoltória do sinal. Como eu tenho um sinal de vibração né, obtido através do acelerômetro, ele possui um comportamento aí bem assim, é complicadinho de quantizar, né? Então, so, you, you tirou... apply the Hilbert, the Hilbert transform to, to extract the, the envelope of the signal. Ok. Uh, I'll try to try to, to, to translate. So, okay. Okay. Go, go uh, no caso, né, para extrair essa envoltória, então, é para poder diferenciar qual a fase que teria, né, uma falha presente no motor. No trabalho geral, pode se obter através da correlação cruzada, matematicamente falando. So, só que ele uh, só é uma resposta binária. Tem falha ou não tem falha, mas não localiza. E a transformada de Hilbert te ajudou através da energia dela. So usually you have some binary. Um, uh, uh, so can, can, can you can you repeat, please? Because well, I, I'm not specialist on this issue and trying to to translate. Okay. 
Eu vou, eu vou responder de novo, então. Ok. É, é assim, quando eu utilizo somente a correlação cruzada para comparar um sinal do motor... When you, when, you fase, use only, when you use only the cross correlation to compare... Um motor saudável, né? A condição saudável com uma falha motor, no estator... A, a healthy motor with a, a, a motor with, with a damage uh, with no estator okay. uh, at state é, ele simplesmente me responde se tem um curto circuito interno né interno nele ou não so the, the answer is is binary uh, if there there is a short circuit or not isso é uma resposta binária Porém, não identifica qual a fase do motor que tem um dano. Se é a fase A, B ou C. Uh, so, um, you, you cannot uh, identify which phase, the phase A, B or C, there is faulty. No caso, para localizar qual a fase que possui um dano, a transformada de Hilbert, a energia né, do envelope do sinal, permitiu, né, através do agrupamento de dados. So the the Hilbert transform can identify the 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 energy um, of the of the the energy of the of the transform, is it? Uh, and and then uh, it can indicate which which one is the 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 faulty um, phase, A, B, or or C. Is it? Acredito que é isso. Não sei <laughs> se ficou muito bem transmitida a informação. Ok. I, I think Al Alison has another question. Why do the authors uh, are sure that the, the, that the motor is healthy? Uh, por que que os, os, os autores é, têm certeza de que o motor está é, sem, sem problemas? Porque foi feito uma inspeção, todo um levantamento da máquina para verificar se não existia mais nenhum outro tipo de falha. E ele foi bobinado because, especificamente para isso. Because uh, it was done an, an inspection by the authors to make sure that, that this is not faulty. This inspection was visual or, uh, or, or something else? O, well, foi o estator da máquina foi refeito. What the state the machine state was rebuilt so that that's why you are sure that the the, uh, the, the motor is uh, is healthy okay okay então é com com o estator rebobinado vamos assim dizer né eu tenho certeza que a única falha que teria seria aquela que eu mesmo provocasse okay why Uh, well, rebobinado, I, 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 it's a technical term. I don't know how to translate it. If I someone can rewinding. help me. <laughs> well, when, when the, the stator is rewinded, so uh, you are sure that this is healthy, is it? Okay, okay. Well, Alison, uh, uh, is it clear now? Uh, well, we have we have another question from Professor Rafael. Uh, can you share it to us? Um, what MAM were you using? Uh, did it generate uh, an analogic signal? Uh, there was a sampling frequency. Did you check the data sheet to see the resonance? Um, Is this question for uh, for Wallace or something? I'm not sure. Vamos lá. Acho que ainda é o mesmo trabalho. Uh, uh -huh. Tá. Bom, o, o sensor mains que foi utilizado, né? É o ADX L335. Só que a pergunta do professor é pertinente. Pelo so menos that, que eu... that, that, Let me try to. to... To translate so the um, so um, the the um, the sensor was ADX 
uh, ADX, what? Sorry. É, sensor é o ADX, né? No entanto, a ADX. pergunta do professor Rafael é pertinente. Não verificamos né, no datasheet a frequência de ressonância dele. Realmente é uma pergunta que deixaria yeah. aberto nesse quesito. Well, the, uh, Wallace considered that the question is relevant, but um, the, the resonance frequency was not verified uh, at the, the, the data sheet. Mas a frequência de amostragem foi de 25 kilosamples por segundo. But the sampling frequency we used was uh, 25 kilohertz. Samples per second, yeah. Ok. Ok. Well, let's see if we have another question. Well, um, I have a... Um, I have a, a, a question to... to to the second work, dynamic control validation of power generation system of an offshore platform through real-time digital simulation. Uh, was it, was it um, a petroleum platform uh, or from Petrobras or something like that? Yes, it was a petroleum platform. Okay, and and your your yeah, you, you said your work you used um uh, um uh how did you say some real real data to to make the the simulations the the control validation? Yes, uh, we use some data sheet of the machines of the platform. We use file tests and. We have the uh, ability test, uh, um, star motors, uh, 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 power, and uh, validate the, the control system. Okay. Um, we have another question for from. Professor Rafael, can you share to us, please? Um, a question to Julie. Can you tell us about the results from the three cases of transient phenomena simulated to, uh, simulated to analyze the performance of the generation system? Uh, we have the validation. We uh, simulate three cases of transient. The first one was the short circuit in the bus of 4.16 kilovolts. Uh, we have a short, short circuit of 2,000 milliseconds. Uh, we, I don't know if it's if I can uh, charge the. If, if you want to, to, if you need to share your screen, feel free uh, to, to, to make yourself more clear. Well, but now... Can you see the... No, I can hear your voice, but your image... Um, the screen? Uh, in your, 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 no, your, we, what, uh, what do I see is your, oh, now I think, yeah, now I think we can see your, yeah, now we are, we can see your, your, your screen. So I have the first case that it's a short circuit in the bus of 4.16 kilovolts. Uh, we, we held that in 2,000 milliseconds, uh, and we can see the results. Here we have the terminal voltage. Uh, if we can see it is in 
one uh, uh, per unit, and this is the the phenomenon of the transient. The poise uh, before uh, the after the the transient, we can see that the terminal voltage uh, go to normal operation. That is in PO. Uh, can, can, can you repeat please because your 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 voice failed on the, the last phrase okay the terminal voltage mm -hmm. after the transient we can see that there is a drop in the terminal voltage after, uh, after then uh, we can see that it returns to the a normal operation that is in one view. Uh, we can see in the red curve that we have the variation of the the speed. It it return uh, to the speed that we want. That is a nominal condition. Uh, the second. The second test that we play is the synchronous generation. Uh, the the connection is failing again. So I I, I heard from the second, and then I I, I lost uh, what Julie said. Can you repeat, please? Uh, well, I think we we faced some some problems with your your voice. Uh, I, I I missed since you said the, the second and and then I I I couldn't hear what you said after that uh, okay well uh, i want to speak that without the presentation i, I believe that it is a problem a action of one gener a synchronous generator and with that we have to remove uh, two motors two induction motor of 11 megawatts and one of 5.7 megawatts uh, the system can return to a uh, normal operation because we have this uh, additional removal of, of load. If we uh, let the load in the platform, the generator have to uh, have to uh, give more uh, power. And the last one was the, the load removal of five induction motor of 11 minutes. 11 megawatts and in this in this case the platform can return it to normal operation the generators have to uh, have to share uh, less uh, power to the to the system uh, okay okay so i i think alison asked another question um could you please share to us uh so julie can you tell us why did you choose these transients is it clear the question to you uh, is the short with in the bus of 13.8 kilovolts we taste the we simulate the condition of the generators. We we simulate uh, another ones, but uh, this this scenario simulated in the five tests of the platform and uh, platform. So I have to validate them too. Okay. Okay. So, um, more questions? Any anybody have 
more questions to uh, the other's works presented this uh, this afternoon. Uh, I see the 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 work uh, of voltage imbalance and the, the variation impacts. Um, uh, I would be happy if Jonathan could comment about uh, how the um, um, how this uh, uh, the, the impact of the substitution from this class zero and IE zero IE one. He showed um, a graphic that I think today I'm about. 20, 25 percent um, of the motors used nowadays have uh, uh, class uh, IE0 or IE1. And uh, so can you comment something about um, how to, what is the impact of the substitution for those um, uh, motors that you are studying of class IE4 and um, if uh, and how the difficulties about that is only uh, a matter of um, costs uh, how, how much more does it cost and or, or there are other technical difficulties for this substitution Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, about voltage imbalance, this work uh, aimed to analyze the impact that voltage imbalance have on electrical motors. Uh, voltage imbalance is a disturbance that is present in, in all electrical motors in a higher or a lower degree. Uh, in my case, I have uh, seen a voltage imbalance condition of about four degrees, according to the National Electrotechnical Manufacturers Association. And in the case of substitution, that is an important concern to consider, uh, mainly uh, when we have a uh, new technology, uh, such as the line star permanent man and motor. Uh, so we, in this work, came to analyze the impact that this have uh, on the line star permanent man and motor. The voltage boom balance resulted in, in, in higher increases in current. We, ha we already have that uh, one, percent of voltage imbalance uh, it results in about seven to eight to ten percent of current imbalance that is a uh, very damaging for the electrical motor because if we have uh, we can have currents of double of the nominal current of the nam plate of the name plate of the motor in one of the phases so we analyze this uh, for the line star permanent man motor uh, with uh, four different condition one, three, and four uh, voltage imbalance with under voltage, and one, three, and four with over voltage. In this case, uh, some parameters as the current they're increasing. We are uh, we have seen in the world that the voltage imbalance with over voltage resulted in in the most damaging impact, and the power factor it was inversely proportional to the to the voltage magnitude that is the positive sequence voltage. You know? Okay. Uh, was another question, uh, excuse me, uh, about the substitution. Yeah, the substitution is a, a, a another important concern, but the, the line star permanent model in the present of voltage imbalance, we have a previous work about this condition. Uh, it resulted in, in higher uh, loss, higher temperatures, higher currents, for the over voltage condition, in the case of under voltage in relation to the IE2 and IE3, uh, uh, we have uh, lower consumption, lower current, and lower temperatures. Okay, thank you. Let's see, we have quite a a few um, questions from from the audience. Alison is uh, Alison, uh, Alison is making another question. Can we share uh, if the motor has damages? 
Uh, if the mark Gabriel. Ah, for Gabriel, where is Gabriel? Uh, but Gabriel is uh, Gabriel is the 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 VJ of our session. He's the administrator of our session. Well, so Alison, uh, if you can uh, indicate to, to which um, paper this uh, ask uh, this. Um, question refers uh, I will I'll be glad and then we we can ask the the question again but then we we have another uh, question from dr Rafael can um, so so the question is asks, so Jonathan and and Benedict, uh, Benedict, you, you work together, isn't it? So um, Professor Rafael um, asked if your work can be combined into one paper. Do you want to respond, Benedict? I can respond to. Okay, feel oh, free. Benedict. If you both can can you, you can both we we have time, okay. so you can both answer. Good afternoon, Professor Rafael. In this case, we, in our paper, we analyze different objectives. In my case, the the, one, the first paper is about voltage and balance condition. In the case of Ben Bendy uh, paper, is working in a initial comparison without uh, voltage and balance, and also he analyzed the impact of harmonics. We have some result about the fit harmonics. So the disturbance analyzing in every work is different. So we separate the work into two different papers. Okay. Ben Bendict, uh, well, do you want to comment something? Okay, well, uh, can you hear me? Okay, perfectly. Um, it's just an addition on what Jonathan said in relation to my work, is that with us, we were trying to simulate the harmonic distortion um, in a finite element uh, analysis, in this case, I just didn't mention it in the presentation, in the short video, but in the long video, it is clear that we are doing the correlation between the harmonic distortion as well as uh, a simulation using the finite element. I think it's another question about the professor mm -hmm. about the IE2 efficiency class, uh, show me that Brazil have the IE2 efficiency class. Well, that is a, 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 an old uh, figure. Right now, the uh, Brazil has the minimum energy performance standard. We have the IE3 class efficiency model at the minimum level. And it is expected like that in Europe, they're going to, to pass to the IE4 class efficiency level in 2024. So, uh, we are waiting that in the new uh, edition in Brazil, we can uh, get that level. But right now here in Brazil, uh, the, the actual efficiency level is the IE3. It's in Portuguese, it's the IE3, so it's the Can you comment? Okay. Uh, um, so let's go to another to another question. Ah, so uh, Alison, Alison indicated the, the paper that, uh, so his uh, last question uh, is for this, for the, the fifth paper. So he, he was asking if the motor has damages in the, the initial stake, in the initial state, if the technique works. Vou precisar novamente da ajuda simultânea, tá? Oh, ok, ok. So, uh, take it ah, easy. Devagar, and, né? Take it easy and I'll try to, to translate. Bom, realmente não experimentamos ainda, né? Com o motor com dano inicialmente. They, they haven't uh, made tests with uh, if the motor have an initial fault or has initial damage. Porque como a técnica proposta 
utiliza um agrupamento de dados. Since the proposed technique use a, a data grouping technique, eu ainda preciso de um valor de referência, que no caso é o motor saudável. He still needs a reference value, which is comes from the reference healthy motor. Mas esse trabalho segue em andamento, então é uma coisa que poderá sim ser experimentado. But the the this working is still going on. Uh, the 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 de development continues. So it, it is something that can be tried. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, so do do we have um, more questions? Let's see. Um, well, I, I have a, a question for the um, variable structure model reference adaptive control for squirrel cage induction generator wind um, uh, generator based wind energy. Um, so all, all the, 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 the short videos that is for from Ismael, isn't it? This is your work. Um, so um, I, I was not sure to me um, what what variable are you controlling? You're controlling the the motor speed, isn't it? Yes, I'm controlling the rotor speed, rotor speed, and the fluxes. State okay, and what what is your actuator? You you have mechanical brakes, electromagnetical brakes, or uh, it, my paper is full simulation, so I don't uh, I don't use a emulator uh, in practice. But 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 you have some some actuator. Uh, to, to change the, the state of the system. So you have the, the right-hand side uh, and, the, and the external forces. So uh, to, well, I, I'm, I'm not specialist on wind-based energy, but I understand some of uh, uh, control speed. So you have, um, uh, you, you change the, the, the applied voltage, you have an external force to change the speed. Uh, I, I understand that. Okay. Uh, I, I, Sorry, I am not understanding uh, the, the, this question about the question. this actuator. Because no, I, I am I'm using what? For for instance, you if you have a, a space a space state system, so X dot your audio your audio is not ah my, my audio is it better now? Yes. Can Much you better. hear me? Yes. Um so if you have, for, for instance, a as, as, um, canonical state space system, so we have the equation X dot equals A matrix times um, X, uh, and, and X is the vector of states plus B times U. So the term U uh, uh, is the the external forces, the actuator forces that change the state of the system. So um, I'm trying to, to Your figure out. Your audio is not working. Oh, oh my God. Your audio, o seu, professor, o seu audio está picotando. Não estou conseguindo entender a frase. OK. Gabriel, uh, ah, now, Gab but Gabriel can can understand. Oh, okay, maybe. Well, 
maybe is is my own connection because well may, maybe ismail is having some instability in his uh, connection so um we we can try i think it's my own connection okay so let's see if we have um questions from the from the audience um, Dr. Rafael is making another question for uh, Rafael. So, Ismael, uh, probably if you can hear me. Uh, oh, now we, we, we shared the, the question to, to Ismael, but he he left the session. Probably his connection in, is unstable. So do do we have questions to, to other people of the audience? Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a question for the 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 Hilbert transform. Uh, uh, this belongs to to Wallace, isn't it? Detection on phase identification. Okay. Well, oh, is my is my return it? Okay. Can can you hear me clearly now? It's my off. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will share um, the 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 question that Dr. Rafael uh, asked, and you missed. So for the VS MRAC is the increase of speed for the transient response enough to compensate the decrease in velocity ripple? No, because the ripple is caused by the the signal uh, characteristic of the control. It it. The, the VSM rack basically is a switching control like on off and this this switching makes the uh, ripple so uh, it, it uh, the decrease or increase of the wind speed uh, does the increase or decrease the rotor speed does not affect uh, the, F the VSM rack. Could you understand the, the, the response? Okay. So let's see if we have another question. Well, the, the if the audience wants to to ask another question. Uh, I, I have a question for the fifth work, detection phase identification. Um, I, I, I want to know about how many motors were tested and, and, and how the fault was was induced. Poderia me ajudar numa tradução literal, por favor? Okay, 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 I can help you. Ah, um, the, the, a pergunta foi quantos quantos motores foram usados e, e como que a falha foi induzida é, nesses motores? I, I was asking the, the question in, in, in Portuguese. Ok, go ahead. É, inicialmente, somente um motor foi testado, que é o que a gente tem disponível no laboratório de pesquisas no momento. Ah, ok. So only one motor were tested because there is only one motor available at the, the lab. Esse motor em específico, né? Ele já foi rebobinado para que eu tivesse acesso em determinados locais da espira do estator. So this motor was rewinded. Uh, for uh, in order to make to have uh, 
access at the spiral of the state or é, é tipo conforme fui fazendo o enrolamento do estator eu ia tirando uma ponta para fora para ter uma conexão um terminal então o estator ficou picadinho como se ele tivesse fatiado em vários terminais para poder acessar internamente em relação ao comprimento original Wow, this, this sentence is difficult code for me to translate. Eu acho que yeah. seria mais fácil se eu tentar mostrar uma figura no paper. Posso? Ah, ok, please. Uh, Wallace was going to show a picture uh, that is on the, the original paper. So, what he is he's saying is will be more, more clear. So, you can try to share your screen. Ah, é, great, great. Pode me confirmar se apareceu, fazendo um favor? Yeah, I can, I can see clearly. É, a bobina do estator do motor, para cada fase, ela foi enrolada no interior da máquina, só que eu uh -huh. sempre fui removendo uma parte para fora, como se estivesse deixando uma conexão disponível para mim para poder acessar um determinado local no interior dela. Ok. Não sei se ficou claro ou não. So the um, oh my god bobina how is bobina in English? Uh, I missed the coil. Uh, what the coil was um, um, turned around. Um, well, now I forgot the, the, the rest of the phrase. I'm not a professional translator. So, okay, can you repeat, please? So, the, the coil was... Um, ela foi... Algum, conforme ela foi enrolada no estator, alguns trechos foram é, deixados como acessíveis. Ela foi ah, enrolada e foi, como se fosse um tap, só que ele tivesse ah, acessível para mim. As long as you turn the, the coil around the stator, uh, you make some uh, some parts of of the the wire accessible. Uh, para o usuário, acessível para o usuário. Isso. Accessible to, to the user. Ah, ok. Então, quando foi provocado um curto entre as espiras, eu estava so, dando um curto. Pode. So when when the a short circuit was induced uh, between the, the coils, eu estaria é, reduzindo o tamanho útil da bobina. Por exemplo, curto hmm. entre um e dois. Eu estou dando um curto no interior da bobina do motor. Ah, uh, so he, he can can make a short circuit between uh, the point one and two. So the the total length of the coil would be reduced by by this amount between point one and two. Isso. E esse okay. curto ele foi realizado externamente. Ele foi deixado no painel da máquina acessível. Ah, ok. So, so these um, white dots are the the external parts of the the winding. Uh, that you can short circuit between them. Isso. Ah, okay. Consequentemente, para finalizar a ideia, né? Quando tem o curto, o... há uma circulação de corrente interna, né? Que muda o comportamento eletromagnético da máquina para tentar detectar a falha. Ah, ok. So when you the, you induce um, the short circuit, you um, the behavior of electrical current changes, and then uh, you, you indicate this as a um, uh, a condition of 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 faulty a faulty condition. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, clever. Okay, thank you, Wallace. Thank you. So, do we have more comments? Uh, we have one more question to um, to Benedict. Can you share? Uh, 
Voltage uh, harmonic. Um, ah, to Benedict. Uh, Bendik. Which harmonics were considered? The, the fifth harmonic was considered because fifth generates opposite torque and the efficiency of the machine uh, and the efficiency of the machine decreases. That's the reason why we're analyzing it because of power quality. When um, this energy comes in to feed the motor, any of that in the industry, and we have this, this can be caused by anything from power electronics and any of this stuff. When they introduce into the motor, in this case, the line star permanent magnet, it is affected in such a way that it increases temperature over time. Especially in this case, we have the fifth harmonic as well as the second harmonic. Those are the two that are that really affect, in this case, uh, the efficiency of the motor as well as increasing the temperature over time, degrading the motor. I don't know if I answered the question properly. Okay, thank you, Benedict. Okay. Uh, there is another question from from the audience. Can you share it to us? To Wallace, uh, how the short circuit was uh, physically applied between the coils? Well, I think I, I think the, the it was what you explained. It. Sim, é a mesma explicação anterior. O, yeah. Com a bobina feita com os terminais acessíveis, eu dei o curto externamente. Ah, ok. Uh, it's the same explanation. Uh, in the last picture, he showed um, the, the motor with some terminals uh, that he, he would have the, to, how to access the, some specific parts of the, the coil, and then you short circuit that. Uh, Tem uma única observação que eu não comentei. Another é... observation. O curto circuito não foi franco. The short circuit was not franco. Foi um curto circuito direto, um curto circuito. Was a not direct short circuit. So a gente colocou um transistor MOSFET que simula a o curto circuito como se fosse uma descarga. Ela cresce e diminui. Ah, ok. So you didn't apply a short circuit with an, a, a wire. You, you applied a short circuit with a MOSFET uh, transistor that simulates the short circuit condition. Isso. Okay, but tem uma frequência bem mais alta no chaveamento dele. The, the MOSFET has a higher uh, frequency uh, of um, opening and closing. And... and uh, why uh, why did you use the most fast transistor and not what was for uh, for heat production? Por que que eu utilizei o MOSFET? Yeah. Why, why Na verdade, isso foi MOSFET? uma sugestão que o nosso orientador questionou que na prática, né, o curto-circuito não vai ocorrer de uma forma é, direta, ele vai ser um pouco intermitente, né? Depende um pouco da condição da máquina. Então, com o MOSFET, uhum. eu consigo modular o formato desse curto-circuito entre okay. as espiras. Ok, então, na prática, o short-circuito não é direto, no sentido, e da mesma maneira que acontece quando você apenas plug a wire. Uh, uh, the real short circuit, uh, a wire. O real short-circuito é como something that uh, is opening and closing very, very fast. So with MOSFET, you, you MOSFET transistor, you, you simulate this condition. Yes. And, and, and how, uh, and which frequency you, you used to, to open uma, and close? A frequency. Yeah, frequency. Ele foi uma frequência um pouco alta, não lembro agora também se foi na casa dos 10 kHz, 25 kHz. Agora oh, eu me fugiu de cabeça. 20 kHz. 
Uh, you use the frequency of 20 kilohertz. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, do, do we have more questions? If any one of you, if you want to, uh, we, we have still, well, we have um, 10 minutes more of session. If you want to, to make any questions, feel free. Professor Rafael, if, if you want to try last time your your connection to say hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's better now. It's better. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Sorry by making these questions written, but I, I had no other choice. I, I really wanted to know the answers. So thank you all. Okay. So uh, let's see in the chat if we have more questions. Well, if if we don't have um, any more questions, I think I think we can end the session yes. by now. Okay. Do you want? Uh, to stay a little more, <laughs> a little longer. Well, so uh, I will end the, the, the session by now. And I, I want to thank you all. Um, your works were very interested. And I, I think the, the audience uh, were interested too. And just uh, to acknowledge all of you, okay? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so bye bye. We can okay. we can end the session by now. All right.